Hello, welcome to the Monday, August 10th, 2020 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. And this weekend, DEF CON, of course, happened uh, remotely as everything uh, these days. And one of the big topics, again, IoT and uh, cameras. Now, Guy also took a look at his honeypot and saw exploitation attempts against some older vulnerabilities from 2017, actually, against wireless IP Wi-Fi cam cameras. This is a generic uh, type that's uh, being produced and marketed under 1250 different brand names and models. So essentially the same camera shows up in different housings and under different names, making it pretty difficult to identify if your camera is vulnerable. The exploit as often for these type of systems is pretty straightforward. Just a simple get request with the right parameters allow you to execute arbitrary code. Now, the one type of attack that Guy was sort of zooming in on here is those that establish backdoors with Netcat. Essentially, they are setting up Netcat in order to then connect back to the source of the attack and expose a shell. Very simple, very straightforward attack. And of course, a bit more robust in the sense that the attacker doesn't actually need to brute force a password in this way. They just get a shell back and then, of course, can do whatever they need to do using that shell using a follow-up attack. And today, of course, will be a little bit DEF CON heavy, and we have a second story here coming from Checkpoint. It was actually pre-announced on Thursday, and it's about vulnerabilities that Checkpoint discovered in Qualcomm's Snapdragon. If you have an Android phone, it's very likely that one of these Snapdragon chips is powering your phone. They're often referred to as a DSP or digital signal processor because it does a lot more than really just the CPU. It's also charging controllers and stuff like this are often integrated and it's your one chip solution to essentially build a phone. In the Apple world, of course, you have the Apple a chip series that's being used as a competitor to Snapdragon. Checkpoint did take a closer look at recent Snapdragon chips and found over 400 vulnerabilities in these chips. Now, again, these are entire systems. So when I say vulnerabilities in a chip, does not necessarily mean vulnerabilities in the silicon. Uh, there is extensive firmware involved here. So many, if not all of these vulnerabilities may be patchable in future firmware updates. This is a component that Qualcomm typically delivers uh, to various phone makers, including all of this software. So the way the updates will work here is that Qualcomm first has to fix it on their end and then notify and communicate these fixes to the various manufacturers of phones that use these Snapdragon chips. And then, of course, they have to be integrated into Android and pushed to users. So as you can imagine, patching will be a lengthy affair. And as a result, Checkpoint has not released a lot of details as part of their blog post. I haven't had a chance yet to listen to their DEF CON talk. But they are stating that these vulnerabilities without user interaction will allow an attacker to completely control the phone turn it into a spying tool, launching denial of service attacks that render the phone unresponsive, and then of course, install malicious code on the phone without the user having any indication that this malicious code is running. At this point, there is no indication that these vulnerabilities are currently being exploited. So what should you do about all of this? Well, uh, not much really. Don't do anything uh, because there isn't much that you can do about these vulnerabilities. Hope that there will be an update for your phone in the future. And then, of course, just be careful how and where you use your phone. 
And the Great Firewall Report has a great blog post by a number of authors about the recent blocking of encrypted SNI or ESNI by China's Great Firewall. So the Great Firewall is monitoring traffic in and out of China and of course is doing some application layer analysis. And one thing it's using to block access to restricted sites is the use of the server name indicator in TLS up to TLS 1.2 and in some forms of TLS 1.3, the server name is sent in the clear as part of the client hello coming from the client to the server. In TLS 1.3, an option was added to encrypt the server name indicator. And that of course removes the ability to block traffic to specific websites. As a result, China decided to block all ESNI traffic. They apparently do that by looking for a specific TLS option, FFCE. So Foxtrot, Foxtrot, Charlie Echo is the hex code for this particular option. It's actually not 100% perfect in the sense that there is a newer form of ESNI that uses different values, ECH. And a few months ago, I looked at the ESNI penetration in the internet and found only very few domains that actually do use ESNI records in DNS. There's a specific DNS record that's required to support ESNI. I guess China could possibly also block that record. But then again, if someone is doing DNS over HTTPS, that may not be visible. And that's why they probably are going for the ESNI option in the TLS header. The article at the uh, Create Firewall report does suggest a number of workarounds how you can evade uh, this particular filter. The Great Firewall is essentially a next generation firewall, I guess what some people would call it. And it suffers from many of the same evasion vulnerabilities that all of these uh, devices suffer. In particular, of course, since it has to operate at a rather fast speed. Well, and that's it for today. So thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.